Mr. Peterson, good evening to you. Can I get your full name and date of birth, please? Paul David Peterson, August 16, 1975. All right, thank you for that. And can I get appearance from counsel starting with the state? Yes, Your Honor, Kevin Mulaney on behalf of the Attorney General's Office. All right, thank you. And counsel? Scott Blake with the Attorney General's Office as well. All right, thank you. Just one of me, Judge. Matthew Long on behalf of Paul Peterson. All right, thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Peterson, you're here on a grand jury case. It is KCR 2019-006302. An indictment has been filed against you. It is charging you with one kind of conspiracy, a Class II felony, one kind of fraudulent schemes that's booked as a Class II felony, one kind of theft, Class II felony, one kind of forgery, a Class IV felony, and 28 counts of fraudulent schemes, and those are charged as Class V felonies. Now, you do have your attorney standing next to you who has given me a notice of appearance that your attorney will be representing you for all proceedings in this matter, okay? All right. Counsel, you're appearing to give me your position on your release conditions? Yes. We're asking for an OR release. I'm quite aghast at the request here given the facts, given the circumstances here, and particularly given Mr. Peterson's status. Mr. Peterson has never been arrested. He is born in Mesa, Arizona. He's lived here his entire life. His parents and grandparents are from here, lived here their life. He has children here. He currently works for Maricopa County. He has complete ties here. There is zero risk of flight. The allegations here we look forward to challenging. I believe that there's a complete lack of mens rea related to Mr. Peterson. The bond is egregiously high, and a bond is not necessary given Mr. Peterson's lack of any history whatsoever, his employment status. And Mr. Peterson's been aware that there's been an investigation here going on for many weeks, many months. I've personally been in contact with the AG's office to offer a chance to sit down, have a conversation. This is something that's been known for a long, 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 long time. And for an attempt for the government to now ask for a $500,000 cash bond, given these circumstances, given this individual, is curious and troubling. Under the standards for bond setting, OR is the default. And there must be some incredible basis to ask for a bond, let alone a bond of this nature, given all of those factors. Judge, OR release is the only appropriate release conditions under these circumstances, given this individual's history, circumstances of this case, and there's absolutely zero risk of flight. It's purely punitive on the state's part in going to a secret grand jury and to get this, the attempt to get this bond in the process that they did. It's punitive, unduly unnecessary, and submit violative of the principles of due process. All right. Thank you, counsel. All right. Can I get the position of the state regarding release conditions, please? Yes, Your Honor. The state believes that the bond is appropriate. The state would ask that the court affirm the bond that has been set. The commissioner at grand jury, having the opportunity to listen to returns at grand jury, had the opportunity to listen to the facts of the case, was given a summation of the facts of the case. The state initially asked for a cash bond of $250,000 cash. The commissioner at the time, after hearing a summation of the facts, raised the bond to $500,000 cash. The reason that the state believes that this bond is appropriate, this is a fraud scheme that spans several years. The dates of the indictment are from November 2015 through May 19th of this year. The victim is the state in this matter, and the state has sustained a substantial loss. The state is alleging that 
the amount of loss is over $500,000 in this matter. Um, so that is one of the factors um, that the state would ask to for the, the court to take, take into consideration. Additionally, um, the defendant was advised through the Court of Appeals in a decision in 2007 that these adoptions that he was engaging in violates the free association, the compact of free association with the Republic of the Marshall Islands. He disregarded that opinion from the Court of Appeals in 2007, and he continues to perform these adoptions. The allegations that are alleged by the state is that the defendant is un un justly enriching himself through fraudulent applications, through access, in order to pay for pregnancy costs for these adoptions. The defendant is profiting from this. Even today, there are birth mothers that the defendant has flown from the Marshall Islands that are here in Arizona waiting and being this whole process of the scan. So if this, if the defendant's out, it's likely this will continue on. Additionally, the state is aware of subsequent or other investigations that have been taken place by the federal government and by the state of Utah. There's active warrants out of the state of Utah and there's an active federal warrant as well. For those reasons, the state believes that the court should re should affirm the bond that was set. All right, thank you, counsel. All right, Mr. Long, any um, follow-up? Yes, um, Mr. Bing, uh, Attorney General, Assistant Attorney General may want to look at that uh, um, Court of Appeals uh, decision again because of the, um, did not go down the way that um, he presented that. In fact, um, Judge, at no point did uh, the uh, Assistant Attorney General uh, even attempt to argue that there's a flight risk here which is the primary basis for bonding. So he confirms that this is a punitive request on their behalf. There's no flight risk here. The bond in that amount um, is, is completely inappropriate. I believe a cash bond in particular is, is particularly um, inappropriate. There's simply no, no flight risk. If, if there are, in, in fact, holds or warrants in another state or in federal court, that only ensures he's going to be available, going to be um, uh, appearing. That is the first and primary inquiry that courts must make. And at no point did uh, the Assistant Attorney General even make that argument. Instead, he began with a, an opening statement, which if that's their theory, I look forward to that trial because these are proper business practices that they simply disagree, that we clearly disagree with in the process. And we'll have an opportunity to do that in front of 12 people, in front of a, uh, in a, in a different court. But their theory notwithstanding, in getting it through a grand jury, there is no flight risk here. There is zero risk of that. This man who has been born and lived in Arizona and Mesa, in this county, his entire life, as has his again, parents and grandparents, and his family, his, his ties here are, um, are, are, are so secure. This type of a this type of a bond in this type of a case, it is. We see other cases, we see violent cases, and don't come near this type of a bond, even a request of that. The request is curious. It is troubling. It is troubling that it's come from this office. Uh, Judge, I attempted. I apparently the press had information from the AG's office or someone, including the indictment, whereas I was not, I was stonewalled. I was not given information by the arresting agency, by the case agent, and even by the Maricopa Sheriff's Office, who at 9.55, based on their system, didn't even show him as being booked in. And yet I called the IA court and learned that, in fact, he was booked in, and he had court at 11 o'clock. And I'm called multiple times, myself personally, as well as my staff. And so there's a number of irregularities that have gone on here that are very troubling. 
There's a number of irregularities that seem clear, clearly tied to the Attorney General's office, and that they had announced a press conference tomorrow and provided an indictment to the press, and yet cannot communicate with who this office, that is the Attorney General's office, knows is Mr. Peterson's attorney. I specifically called Mr. Malady, Malady, I'm sorry, multiple weeks ago. I called him again today. I can't get calls back, yet the press has no problems getting information from their office. I'd also point out that I called in order to inform the Attorney General's office of what may be a very clear conflict of interest, as the Attorney General is currently involved in civil litigation with Mr. Peterson in his role as the county assessor. All of these factors, given the timing, the current year and cycle that we are in over the course of the next 12 months, is troubling. It's concerning, especially now that I get an opportunity to see this probable cause statement and the errors, factual errors and legal errors that are clearly here. So there are real, real concerns, Judge, in seeing procedurally what has happened here and the requests that are going on by this office. All right, thank you. Your Honor, if this state could just briefly address flight risk at this time as well. Yeah, very, very briefly. Very quickly. The defendant does have strong ties to the Marshall Islands. He has flown several individuals back and forth from the Marshall Islands. That is a concern of the state, is that it would be an easy place for him to flee to. So the state does believe there is a flight risk as well. You never visited there, I take it. Okay. All right, thank you, Counsel. And I do appreciate positions from both parties. However, at this stage of the proceedings, irrespective of the comments that there are alleged irregularities, I don't find any irregularities relating to the judicial officer who set this bond. Obviously, that judicial officer did believe that there was a flight risk in here because the warrant in this case does seek to have Mr. Peterson surrender his passport. So obviously, that was a concern at the time that the bond was set. This court is going to affirm at this stage of the proceeding the $500,000 cash bond. I am going to order that Mr. Peterson surrender his passport at his next court date, which will be a not guilty arraignment hearing in the downtown Superior Court on October the 15th at 8.30 in the morning. No contact with any witnesses. If there are any co-defendants that are named at this point in time or in the future, no contact with any co-defendants. No weapons on release. No drugs out of valid prescription. Anything further from the parties? Nothing further from the State, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Long, anything further? I'd ask you to reconsider your ruling or set it as secure, Judge. Okay. No, I'm going to affirm it as a cash bond based on the warrant that's set in this case. All right. Thank you.